Welcome, I'm Melanie Cohn, a food security analyst for the Famine Early Warning Systems Network, or FUSENET. Thank you for watching. If at any time you wish to skip ahead, please click the slide below to advance. To access closed captioning, click on the YouTube icon. This presentation summarizes the food security outlook through January 2017 for the 11 countries that FUSENET monitors in West Africa. Before we start, a bit of background on our analysis. FUSENET does projections of food security outcomes using a methodology called scenario development. To prepare this outlook, our specialists conduct an eight-step process to analyze a range of information and data, and develop scenarios that look eight months into the future. In Burkina Faso, Chad, Guinea, Liberia, Mali, Mauritania, Niger, Nigeria, and Sierra Leone, this analysis is the basis of trimestral food security outlook reports and monthly updates. The Central African Republic and Senegal are covered remotely by analysts in neighboring countries. The bimonthly remote monitoring report focuses on anomalies. On these maps, a colored outline of the country indicates the highest level of food insecurity anticipated in areas of concern. In all FUSENET countries, we describe acute food insecurity using the Integrated Food Security Phase Classification, or IPC 2.0. This five-phase scale is used by analysts and humanitarian assistance agencies around the world, including the Akadra Harmonize in West Africa. As we discuss classifications, please keep in mind that when an area reaches phases 3, 4, or 5, crisis, emergency, or famine, urgent humanitarian assistance is required. FUSENET uses an exclamation point on its maps to highlight areas where humanitarian assistance is helping to lower the phase classification. First, let's look at the seasonal calendar for Sahelian areas of West Africa. The red box highlights the current analysis period, August to January. The rainy season is currently ongoing and cultivation for the main agricultural season is coming to a close. Income from agricultural activities such as weeding fields helps poor households buy food at the market. The agricultural lean season, when household food consumption is generally limited due to depleted stocks, is currently affecting agricultural households and will usually continue until September when the main harvests begin. The main harvest will occupy most agricultural households for much of the outlook period. Peak labor demand for harvesting crops generally occurs from October to December. The ongoing rainy season is also improving pastoral conditions, which in turn is improving livestock body conditions, milk availability, and livestock prices. This is increasing incomes and food sources for pastoralists and has ended the pastoral lean season. Pastoralists generally begin migrating with their livestock from northern areas to southern areas beginning in mid-November. They will also benefit from increased livestock sales during holidays such as Tabaski, which occurs in mid-September this year, and then Christmas and the New Year in December and January, respectively. A Summary of the Outlook In northeastern Nigeria, conflict has limited access to adequate food, water, and health services for significant numbers of people, and many are facing emergency, IPC Phase 4, outcomes. Information from recent rapid assessments, although limited and not statistically representative, also raises the possibility that a famine, IPC Phase 5, could be occurring in the worst affected and less accessible areas. In certain agropastoral areas of the Sahelian countries, conflict-affected parts of the Central African Republic and the Lake Chad region, and most regions of Sierra Leone, stressed IPC Phase 2 and crisis IPC Phase 3 outcomes are expected until the next harvest begin in September and October. Food security outcomes are then expected to improve, although conflict-affected parts of the Central African Republic and the Lake Chad region will remain in emergency IPC Phase 4, Crisis IPC Phase 3, and Stressed IPC Phase 2 situations. Elsewhere, the majority of households will be in minimal IPC Phase 1 due to favorable food prices and seasonally normal livelihood activities. Here's more information on the drivers of acute food insecurity. Average to above average rainfall helped ensure above average crop production regionally in 2015-2016, although production was below average in Chad, Ghana, and locally in Niger and Nigeria. Adequate food supply this year has led to average prices in most countries, as illustrated by this map. 
The light and dark green dots represent markets where the prices of millet were average or below average in 2016 compared to the five-year average 2011 to 2015. However, in Nigeria, the depreciation of the Naira has led to a significant increase in staple food prices. The red dots on this map represent markets where prices of millet were at least 30% above last year's prices. According to current seasonal forecasts, cumulative rainfall for the remainder of the 2016 rainy season will be average to above average across much of West Africa, with the exception of the bimodal zone where average to below average precipitation is expected. However, in these bimodal areas, below average rainfall will not necessarily affect crop development given the large quantities of precipitation that these areas typically receive. In most areas, the 2016-2017 crop production is expected to be average to above average. Harvests starting in October are expected to improve food availability and income opportunities and cause cereal prices to decline between October 2016 and January 2017. Increased livestock demand during the Tabaski holiday in mid-September and the end-of-the-year holidays in December is expected to increase livestock prices, helping to ensure that the incomes of pastoralist households are adequate. Conflict remains a primary driver of acute food insecurity in West Africa and has led to the most severe outcomes in Nigeria, Niger, Chad, and the Central African Republic. This map represents violent incidents in 2016 that have led to significant fatalities. Conflict disrupts livelihoods, impedes market functioning, and prevents the delivery of humanitarian assistance. Here are more details on a few specific countries. Data from recent rapid assessments, though limited and not statistically representative, suggests emergency IPC Phase 4 in conflict-affected areas of northeast Nigeria and raises the possibility that a famine, IPC Phase 5, could be occurring in less accessible areas. In July, SILS, FAO, WFP, and FUSENET issued a joint alert on the situation indicating that improvements in humanitarian access and a sharp increase in the provision of emergency assistance were urgently needed. Conflict is the primary driver of this extreme acute food insecurity. The ongoing conflict in northeast Nigeria, which intensified in 2012 and led the government to declare a state of emergency in 2013, has caused thousands of deaths and disrupted the livelihoods of millions of Nigerians. It has also disrupted markets and reduced cross-border trade. In some towns, markets have been closed altogether and access to humanitarian assistance remains limited. In 2015, the Boko Haram conflict spread to Cameroon, Chad, and Niger, and a multinational joint task force intensified military operations in the Lake Chad region to take back towns that had fallen to Boko Haram. In 2016, military activity secured areas in central and southern Borno state, which had been inaccessible. A Kadrahamranize assessment estimated that more than 3 million people in Borno state were in crisis, IPC phase 3, or worse, and in need of urgent humanitarian assistance. The Kadrahamranize is a food security classification system compatible with IPC. The data collected during rapid assessments since May, although limited and often not statistically representative, showed likely high rates of global acute malnutrition and severe acute malnutrition, and in some cases a probable elevated crude death rate. This raises the possibility that a famine, IPC Phase 5, could be occurring in the worst affected and less accessible pockets of the state. Famine, IPC Phase 5, is declared when food security analysts reach a consensus using representative data that the following three conditions have been met. At least 20% of an area's population faces an extreme lack of food, at least 30% of children are acutely malnourished, and the crude death rate exceeds 2 per 10,000 per day. More data and analysis are necessary to fully understand the situation in northeast Nigeria. While the conflict in the Northeast continues to be the primary driver of acute food insecurity in Nigeria, the depreciation of the Naira is also exacerbating food insecurity. The depreciation of the Nigerian Naira has been driven by the drop in global crude oil prices. 
the government of Nigeria obtained significant revenue from the sale of oil. This graphic illustrates the drop in government revenue from oil that has occurred over the past several years. As the Naira has depreciated, prices of staple foods have significantly increased. On this graph, the red line represents the Naira's value in U.S. dollars. The trends in staple food prices are represented by the other colored lines. This graphic illustrates the price of maize in Dawano, the largest cereal market in West Africa, which is located in Kano, Nigeria. High prices in Nigeria could affect markets and trade across the region. At the markets represented by the red dots on this map, the price of maize was 100 to 125 percent higher in June than the same time period last year. In 2014, the Ebola epidemic in Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone rapidly became the largest Ebola outbreak in history. And in March 2016, the World Health Organization finally declared the public health emergency to be over. In January 2016, FuseNet opened offices in each of these countries, which had previously been covered remotely. FuseNet is now more closely monitoring and reporting on the food security situation, as well as strengthening the early warning capacity of food security partners. Economic recovery in the countries has led to a normalization of food and income sources. However, weak household purchasing power continues to affect food security for the worst affected poor households, particularly in Sierra Leone. Global market prices of iron ore, an important export for Sierra Leone and Liberia, and rubber, an important export for Guinea and Liberia, are represented on this graphic. In Sierra Leone, significant populations face stressed, IPC phase 2, acute food insecurity due to higher staple food prices and slow economic recovery from the Ebola crisis. The depreciation of the Leone is driving the higher prices, which in turn is driven by low export earnings from iron ore. However, harvests beginning in September are expected to be near average, and most districts are expected to improve to minimal, IPC Phase 1, acute food insecurity by October. In Guinea, markets are well stocked from above average production in 2015, and prices remain stable, which is allowing households adequate access to food. Livelihoods affected by Ebola are being rebuilt, while the maize, fonio, cassava, and rice harvests in mid-August and into September are expected to be average. As a result, the country will maintain minimal IPC Phase 1 acute food insecurity outcomes through at least the outlook period. In Liberia, the main rice and cassava harvests are expected to commence on time in September and October and will further improve food availability and consumption levels for most households between September and January. As a result, minimal IPC Phase 1 acute food insecurity is expected to continue in all areas of the country during this period. However, the drop in international rubber and iron ore prices mentioned earlier has led to a loss of employment in those sectors. Affected households are having difficulty meeting their basic non-food expenditures. Before closing, a reminder to check the reports on our website for more detail. You may also subscribe to alerts on specific countries or regions. Once you sign up, we will send you an email whenever a new report is posted. And of course, you can learn about new reports by following us on social media. Thank you for listening. Our next video briefing is scheduled for November.